the dimples on your backside, I'm going to put a little dot there. And he did too. If you look at the, the one that I didn't draw over, you'll notice that there's just a little dimple there. This little shading is the gluteus medius because all you have to do is take a, a little track from the dot, from the dimple, to the great trochanter, and that will always give away the position of the gluteus medius. This over here, all of this is tensor fascia, and it's kind of bunched up. The tensor fascia muscle is a really interesting muscle because it could flare out, it could, it could fold, because if, if you think about it, your underwear line would kind of go like this, okay? Or if you're European, like the Speedo underwear, like this. You see this arc, that's where the leg comes out of, correct, the thigh? So it goes right across the great trochanter, and you'll see that your bend would actually be a little bit higher. Therefore, this tensor fascia muscle can oftentimes fold right here. And you'll see this really clearly with Michelangelo. Now, getting back to what I wanted to talk to you about, there's what I call piping that happens on the lateral border of the latissimus dorsi. Now, don't let any of this conversation I'm having with you, intimidate you, like, oh my goodness, lateral border, latissimus dorsi, teres major, all this stuff. All this means is the outside edge of the latissimus dorsi is attached to ribs. Therefore, when there's any kind of pull, and you can see that he's holding a staff over here. So because of that, there's force in a downward angle like this. And because of that, it's almost like you're doing uh, some kind of like, like for instance, imagine if you were at the gym and you're holding on to something that's resisting, right? And you're pushing down on that resistance. Well, all these muscles underneath the arm and your shoulders are going to tense up, but specifically your latissimus dorsi. That's how you do pull-ups. You know, your arms, your latissimus dorsi. But because it's locked in here, you know, the outer edge of the latissimus dorsi is locked into these ribs. It creates its own, almost looking like it's its own muscle. And it's this piping that you'll see on your own body, perhaps, if you do a pull-up. Okay, now all of this here, all this shading, just suggests that that is a sacrospinalis that is deeply buried underneath all of those muscles, but you can always see evidence of it all the way through. This is the medial border of the sacrospinalis. It just looks like poker chips, like a whole stack like this. But over here, it just becomes bigger. And it can look like multiple forms, by the way. The neatest thing about the sacrospinalis is I could see the edge that's hitting and almost overlapping. As a matter of fact, it is overlapping over the the spine, but it's this edge. Right over here, that's the sacrospinalis lateral form. So it becomes, this becomes the new, the new contour. It's new and improved, new contour. It pops out right here. It's amazing, because now you don't see the side of the body you see this new border, and that new border is the sacrospinalis, just bunching up, and you can see a little bit of it here and here. Okay, good, because I'm gonna get back to that in just a moment. What we ended up doing is, I don't know if you remember this, but watch, this is the triangle of auscultation, and inside the direction that I'm drawing right now, those are the rhomboids inside. And sometimes they could even look like they're, they're trying to push their way out. But that triangle is, remember, where Galen would put his ear way back in the first century AD. The Terry's Major, I want to just put form lines so you remember that it's going away from us, going away from us, going away from us, like this. And it, the arm is going to cast a shadow over it in my drawing right now, just to remind you where all these things are, are going to. This is going into that little area right in there. And voila. There. It's a neat, I think it's a, just a beautiful area. Now, uh, I need to kind of try to explain a few things over here. 
And this little spot, remember the clock hands down here. If I go across to the other side, to me, that's where the scapula uh, changes direction. Then it kind of runs down all the way here. So this over here would be the teres major. This is the infraspinatus. And that, those create the new border on the other side. So basically, you just kind of go around to the other side. And that will help you find what's on from what you see on this side, you'll see on the other side. If you just use a little bit of simplistic perspective, the triangle of auscultation from this point of view is not going to be seen. This big bulge is the trapezius. And again, it's being pushed up because it's on the spine of the scapula, which is extremely foreshortened from this point of view. Okay, so here's the scapula on one side. Use the scapula other. What I could do is I could use red to signify that. So let me get a nice red pen for you. To remind you, that's the scapula on one side. Here's the scapula on this side. Okay, because that's that's going to be the the most important part. Remember the Tierra del Fuego? There it is. There, isn't that beautiful? Okay, now let's look at uh, the next image. Okay, so in this one, we have the same artist. Now, you have to remember, oftentimes, females weren't available as models for artists. It wasn't until the 1800s uh, when females were kind of culturally, uh, it was okay, but uh, it's always been kind of like a funky thing for women to take off their clothes in front of strangers. I mean, we don't think about it now, but, um, but you know, in different time, different place, uh, it wasn't always easy. So a lot of the artists, you know, whether they use their wives or, or usually it's like a wife, uh, but it wasn't always easy. So a lot of times, like somebody like Michelangelo, he, a lot of times his females can look masculine. At the same time, to give him credit, he did some pretty exquisite women. I mean, all you have to do is think about the Pieta uh, of uh, Mother Mary holding uh, Christ. Uh, and, and you can see it's like, oh my gosh, she is sublimely beautiful. Uh, but when you look at this image, you'll see that, you know, there's a time when my, my students, is that, is that male or female? It's actually female. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw over this, and you'll see that... This is a much more subdued drawing by the same artist. This is still Pontormo, but it's female. And Pontormo had kind of an interesting way of like when he was just jotting down faces, he'll just, just, just do these kind of like little oval shapes and the, the, the eyes are kind of like this. I mean, it's very Pontormo. I mean, even if he doesn't do it too clearly, you know, you'll oftentimes notice that Pontormo is like this. Sometimes Pontormo... Um, Parma Giannino are very similar in the way they look, you know. But let's uh, now look at the, the same things that we're looking for on the male, we're going to find on this body. So one of the things that in this case, I think the scapula is most revealed here at the Tierra del Fuego, over here at the chains of the clock hands, and over here where the puckering happens, even if you're wearing a shirt, if you raise your arm, that's where your shirt kind of bunches up. Okay, good, because now the acromion process is revealed in this area. The change of direction reveals itself. And then we have this kind of very light line that I'm going to draw for the scapula. The scapula is usually more than 90 degrees. This is very close to 90 degrees. But you have to remember, these are not real people. These are drawings, so there's going to be a little variance. On the other side, if I just kind of jump across really quickly, you'll see, well, there's the scapula on the other side. And it is, in fact, in perspective. So it's foreshortened. The dip over here indicates this is trapezius, this arc here. And then it changes to another form, and that's the spine of the scapula. And the deltoid is attached to that. So the first important things to locate are the scapulas in this case. And you can do it different ways. There's C7. Uh, the dimples on the back side are going to be over here. 
So here's the sacral triangle, but I'm going to push this to be more and more female. So I'm going to put the, the rhombus of my callus in here because it looks more feminine. The ilium is hidden over here, just kind of disappears. So this is the posterior superior iliac spine or the dimples. That's this guy here, this one there. Then the gluteal cleft, which sometimes I call the plumber's cleft. This right, right in there, okay, that separates both butt cheeks. The great trochanter is very obvious here, and that's very male, so this could be male. I, sh I should find out for you. Uh, regardless, this is a different body, very different. It's less aggressive than the one I just finished. The spine is pretty evident. The one thing I want you to take note of is how gracefully they draw the spine. They draw it as like forms that meet in the middle. So it doesn't look just like a line. You'll see that there's a little shading here because we do have subcutaneous fat. And as the body rotates, you're gonna see different little contours. And remember that each form has a contour. It's not just the outside contours, the main contours of the main frame of this, this uh, image. It's also each form has its own contour. So because we know where the Tierra del Fuego is, then I think it's very apparent now that this is, I'm going to not even say anything for a second because I want you to just say it to yourself. And I hope you said that Terry's major. And then the long head of the tricep jumps in between that. And the Terry's minor, which is not visible here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to omit it. And I hope you guys are okay with that. But if you're not, I'm going to go ahead and put it in. The infraspinatus and teres major basically just blend into one on a real person. This is the tendon of the trapezius. And this is the trapezius itself. And it kind of meanders about a little bit and does that. On the other side, it's virtually invisible. So I'm going to have to just put it in by making a mirror and putting a mirror up to this and doing that. Do you see what I did? Now, the other thing that I could see is is this, the border between teres major and latissimus dorsi. Then the latissimus dorsi is really not drawn here. There's like a little shading, no piping like you saw in the other one. The external oblique flares out and becomes the flank portion, the external oblique, kind of like that. The two forms of the sacred spinalis. Remember the poker chips or baguette? And then you have the major form of like the French roll or the lateral border of the sacred spinalis is this big bubble that he did. This swing that I'm gonna put down right in here is shading of the serratus anterior underneath. It always kind of swings down from the Tierra del Fuego. In this case over here, you'll see this form and to me, that's what that is. That's, that's a serratus anterior. Then we have the contour of the body here. Gluteus medius, gluteus maximus. Remember what I said about the, the great trochanter? I'm going to put a little bump here, even though you don't see it on this drawing. But if I were to make a line like that, that would be the separation between gluteus medius, gluteus maximus. So over here, you actually see very, very light little shading. And if anything, you can see that this is a different form than this one. This big wheel is the gluteus maximus. And that wheel surrounds this area here. Now, what you don't see is that the muscle actually comes down much lower like this. So I'm going to just put that little line right there. This whole big bump and everything here is all the tensor fascia and, and the thigh muscles like the rectus femoris, vastus lateralis. Okay, so you have the two forms, two major forms of the sacred spinalis. All of this could be sacred spinalis as well, with some of the little undershading. But the main point of this particular drawing for me to show you is all of this that I covered with the male. And like I said, this may be male, but, uh, but it's a little bit of a different body type. Here's the uh, deltoid as it surrounds, remember it's like the donut hole is a chromium process or a crab hand like this. 
and it's always longer on one end than the other. So this is the deltoid, you know, as it's placed over the ball of the humerus. Like Mr. Crab, it's like a little crab hand, like this. And you can see that all the way. This, this to me is the tubercle of the spine of the scapula, just drawn a little bit bigger than, than it really is in real life. That's what I see that as. Uh, some other great fabulous anatomists might differ from that point of view, but this anatomist sees that is that's the tubercle. I've seen the only other person I've seen that actually paints and draws the tubercle of the spine of the scapula is um, Caravaggio. It's amazing that you could actually put like not only the scapula, but a very minute little detail on the scapula. The triangle of auscultation with the rhomboids inside is this little empty hole. And that's always such a good identifying feature of your model when you're in the figure drawing workshop is, or class, is that you look for that triangle. You can even see it on your own body. And that's a telltale sign of the trapezius. Let me actually put that in red, okay? This, folks, is just to remind you of that amazingly fabulous landmark that you'll never not see again, okay? So one arm of that triangle is the scapula. The other one is the trapezius. And lastly, the one that goes around here is latissimus dorsi. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? So when I go across, all of this area over here, over here, over here, gets really bunched up because this arm is coming back around like this, okay? So because that barrel is coming out like this, it really forces all this to get bunched up. Oftentimes, uh, Terry's major could look like a little ball. But in this case, what he does is he bunches up the, the infraspinatus. The, the trapezius gets pushed against the center line here and separates from the top portion. But the teres major is actually still over here. It's just you have a lot of subcutaneous fat in this whole area, but this is the teres major, and the rest is infraspinatus, and once again, here's the scapula. I'm gonna make sure we could definitely see that from across the room. And in this case, I'm gonna even go around that tubercle because it's so exquisitely drawn. I mean, you have to really know that that's there for anyone to draw it that way. How do you like that? I, I really think this is pretty clear to you guys now. There is a lot of value in online art education. We have so much great instruction on NMA that is so easily accessible. Even when I was in school learning to draw and paint, nothing was online. Wherever you are in the world, you can get this instruction. And not only can you watch these lessons that are so valuable and so in-depth and so passionately instructed, but you can watch them again and again and again.